Welcome back, MTN Giants podcast. Like, subscribe, follow the podcast, all that good stuff. The Giants with a huge win, their biggest win in, I would say, years. I mean, you can go back and think about when was the last time the Giants had a win this big. You might be going back to the days of 2016 or even maybe before that, like 2011 or something. I don't know. It's been that long since the Giants had a win that was of this magnitude. They win 20-12 to over the Washington Commanders. We've known for the last couple weeks this was a huge game that the Giants had to win if they wanted to make the playoffs this year. Now, they did not clinch a playoff spot, but according to a tweet by Jordan Ronan based on ESPN's analytics, the Giants have a 90% chance to make the playoffs. So very, very good chance the Giants do make the playoffs as a wild card team, obviously. We'll take it at this point. They win this game 20 to 12. They improve to 8, 5, and 1. Commanders fall to 7, 6, and 1. And there is a ton to talk about. So I'll try to get through this. It's past midnight. I have work tomorrow. I won't rush through it, but I'm happy the Giants won. So at least I have that going for me. But hopefully you guys enjoy the video and let's get into it. So I will say this. Coming into this game, I was very conflicted because I did think the Giants outplayed Washington the last time they played, which of course was the 20 to 20 tie. And the Giants ironically scored 20 again in this game. But I do think that Washington was in a better spot because they were the home team and they were coming off a bye. And the last team they had played was the Giants. So their full attention was on the Giants. The Giants had a week in between against the Eagles, obviously. So I feel like Washington had some advantages, but I did think the Giants outplayed them last time, although it was a tie. I still think the Giants were the better team on the field that day. And they came out today and they definitely looked a bit sluggish offensively the first couple drives. Defensively, they looked great right away. We saw Kayvon Thibodeau was making a huge impact in the first quarter. He was definitely game-changing, had the uh, strip sack fumble, recovered his own fumble, got in the end zone for the first touchdown of the game. That was actually the second quarter, sorry. But yeah, it was early in the game. Kayvon Thibodeau gets around Charles Leno. He shows that great bend, a burst, athleticism, and just put on full display as to why he was a top five pick in this year's draft. He's going to be a force for years to come. We have been waiting for a game like this from Kayvon for a long time. And that is one of the biggest takeaways, of course, other than the win, is like how impressive Kayvon Thibodeau was. And that is going to get us very excited about the future for him. And this game had a crazy ending. I mean, we'll get to it right now. I mean, this game came down to a goal line stand where the Giants had to get Washington not to get in the end zone and keep them from scoring a two-point conversion. So there was a second and 10 play with a minute and eight seconds to go. And Taylor Heineke looked like he was going to be sacked, somehow got out of it, rushed to his right, and he was tackled on the one-yard line by Kayvon Thibodeau. And that right there saved the game as well. So as much praise as I was giving Kayvon earlier, I didn't even mention he had a game-saving play. Because if Kayvon wasn't there... Heineke gets in the end zone and Washington has a chance to go for two and tie the game and most likely go to overtime. So Kayvon saves the game as Heineke has to go out of bounds at the one yard line. He kind of dove, kind of gave himself up somewhere in between that. But then Washington had a five yard penalty on an illegal formation. There were not enough guys on the line. I think it was Curtis Samuel was not set up on the line. Refs called the illegal formation. And then it brings us to the final play. I mean, there was an incompletion before that play, but the final play where, you know, Kayvon Thibodeau gets poked in the eye. So you're down a pass rusher right there. He's like on the side holding his eye. Taylor Heineke pretty much decides to just F it. Let's throw a jump ball. And he gives it to Curtis Samuel, who was guarded by Darnay Holmes. And, and Darnay Holmes is a guy that a lot of Giants fans have not been too fond with this year. And although this is a Giants podcast, I'm a very honest guy. You guys know that. Um, it was pass interference. It was. And now I do think the refs... They like to not call those in that situation. Like, I do think in quarters one, two, and three, and probably the you know, first 12 minutes of the last quarter, they probably will call a pass interference there. But with the game on the line, fourth and six, the giant six yard line, they don't want to make that call and change the game. I think any honest person will admit that Darnay Holmes got there too early and he was all over the receiver and the Giants got away with one. But based on what's happened with the Giants in Washington the past couple of years, I mean, I'll take it. I really don't care how the Giants won this game. I just wanted to win and get ourselves a very good chance to get into the playoffs. And that's what we got. So would I have been mad if they threw a flag? No, because that probably would have been the right call. But the Giants have been so screwed in the past where I almost don't even feel that bad. And of course, like a couple plays before that, Washington did technically score a touchdown, but that was the play 
where the uh, there was the illegal formation. So Brian Robinson did score a touchdown at a shotgun, and and it looked to be a 20 to 18 game, and Washington was going to go for two. And then a late flag came out, and it was the illegal formation. So it all worked out perfectly, um, if you want to put it that way. But we'll start with the offense, and we'll just talk about how they did in this game. Daniel Jones was 21 of 32, 160 passing yards, one touchdown, 35 rushing yards. I would say Daniel had a solid day. It wasn't like spectacular, but it wasn't bad either. Um, of course, almost had the very bad fumble, but his elbow was down. So, uh, yeah, Daniel had in that second quarter drive where the Giants had that 18 play, 97 yard drive in the second quarter. Daniel was like surgical. He was looking great. And then I feel like in the second half, Daniel kind of, you know, took a step back in a way. I think he may have made a couple throws he wanted back. And there was one in particular where it was the play he threw the very risky pass to the flat. It was like a third down play. And he threw a pass to the flat that kind of almost got intercepted. But on that replay, they show that there was a one-on-one opportunity with Isaiah Hodgins down the right sideline. And at that point on like third, and it was like third and eight or something. Like at that point, I just wanted a jump ball. Like you have a one-on-one situation. Why check it down on a very risky pass if you're Jones? Like throw it up there. The Giants really did not have many deep passing attempts in this game. Looking at uh, Daniel Jones's chart now on next-gen stats, he did not have a pass attempted over 13 yards today I mean that's that's pretty rough I don't even know how you don't go deep once in this game so the Giants had no passes attempted over 15 yards they still got the win and I do think part of that's in respect to how good Washington's defensive line is and how flawed the Giants offensive line is so I'm sure that coincides with it but I I feel like there were chances in this game at least to take shots I mean there was one where Daniel had time and kind of spiked the ball on the ground and there was one of course where I just mentioned where they had a one-on-one opportunity to take with Hodgins and I was like why not like it's it's third down and long if he intercepts it which is the worst case scenario it's an arm punt and they're down inside their own five so I mean I don't know. I just thought he should have taken a shot there. Saquon Barkley, I mean, he looked awesome, especially in the fourth quarter. 18 carries, 87 yards, and a touchdown. Justin Pennick from Talking Giants, he tweeted that Saquon had seven carries for 52 yards. Of course, that is amazing, and he had that great drive. The Giants' final drive, Saquon had three straight runs where he picked up first downs. He looked incredible. He was doing spin moves. It kind of looked like the same play, but three times over, and Saquon got the Giants over midfield, and then he got stuffed a couple times times and it led to a Graham Gano 50-yard field goal, which he made. Graham was awesome tonight. Uh, Richie James, I mean, you know, listen, when it comes to Richie James, people are going to always remember the uh, Seattle game, but I think we have to be a bit nicer to Richie James. He's actually been kind of good in certain situations and third down and long situations. He had two catches on third and long today, four catches for 42 yards overall. Not that bad of a special teams game either. He had that nice punt return where they thought he fair catched it in the first quarter, but he actually actually returned it for like 20 extra yards. So I thought Richie James was fine. But as I said, of course, when you think about him, you're going to think about the negatives and what happened in Seattle. So I get it. Uh, rough start to the game by Evan Neal. He definitely did get better as the game went on, but he had a tough time with Montez Sweat, especially in the first quarter. Even John uh, Feliciano, who is a veteran, he had a rough moment in this game. Actually, a few rough moments. I think he had a false start. I think that Evan Neal had a couple false starts. So those guys in particular, not the best performances. But when it's John Feliciano, who's been a veteran and been around for a long time, it's a bit more irritating. And there was a play. It was actually on the drive, ironically, where the Giants had the 97-yard 18-play drive. And one of those 18 plays was John Feliciano getting just manhandled. I think it was Jonathan Allen. And Jonathan Allen like just tackled Saquon Bar for a five-yard loss and made it a second and 15. And in most cases with the Giants, that would ruin the entire drive. But then, of course, Daniel Jones found Richie James on third and long, and they moved the chain. So, you know, they kind of made up for that. But there were some bad moments in this game from their center, John Feliciano. The Giants do have to upgrade that position at some point. But that's a topic for the offseason. So, as I said, Richie James was good tonight. Um, I thought this was the best Saquon had looked in about two months. And there were some annoying points in this game where I felt like they should have ran the ball more. They were definitely passing the ball a lot in the early fourth quarter, late third quarter. And then once they got the ball back after Dexter Lawrence caused that fumble and then Leonard Williams recovered it, after that 
happened, the Giants decided to just run the ball and try to run the clock out. And once Saquon got the ball in those three consecutive plays, he had the Giants over midfield in what felt like a blink of an eye. But I know we love to blame Mike Kafka. I don't think he was that bad. There was just some questionable stuff and like passing it in certain situations where it's like, why not just try and run here? So um, I feel like the run game was actually working in the second half. So I kind of wish they stuck with it more. But hey, they got the win. So it works out. Um, defensively, Kayvon Thibodeau has arrived. I mean, there are some stats about him in this game. Kayvon overall, 12 tackles, three tackles for loss, one sack, one forced fumble, one touchdown. I mean, to do that in one game, rookie season, biggest game of your career in the NFL, I mean, that is just basically what Kayvon's here to do. And he's that type of guy with his personality that I'm sure would love to be on prime time. So I'm sure he definitely had this one circled on the calendar and he definitely showed up. So Kayvon will be here for a while. He'll be awesome, and I'm glad he's a giant. Darnay Holmes, I mentioned his pass breakup on that final play. We mentioned it's, you know, it was pass interference, but not called, so it is what it is. The Dexter Lawrence fumble, we went over that, and that play did save three points because Washington was well in field goal range. I think they were in the Giants' like 10-yard line or so, so it was going to be like a pretty easy chip shot field goal, but Heineke did lose that ball as he was going to the ground, so Brian Dable challenged it, which, by the way, was a great challenge by Dabes, and the Giants got the ball back, and it definitely saved three points. So it would have made it a 22, or it would have made it a 17 to 15 game at that point. If I was, um, if I was Rivera, I would have gone for it at that point. But you know, they lost the ball anyway, so it was weird. The Giants took a, a little time to challenge that one, but they got it off in time, and, and luckily it was overturned, and the Giants got the ball. So the Giants' corners and linebackers, they, they got cooked at times. I'm not going to lie. The Giants' defense needs some work in those areas. Of course, you know, Noah Dory Jackson tonight, your top corner, is going to be out. Nick McLeod had some rough moments, and Nick McLeod actually dropped what would have been a game-winning interception in the end zone. It was the play where, um, where Heineke kind of bobbled the snap in a way. It was a shotgun, but he bobbled it in the air. He got it, and it kind of rushed his throw, and he made a very ill-advised throw to, um, I think, Jahan Dotson, and Dotson had to play defense on it, but Nick McLeod definitely could have caught that in the end zone and kind of just sealed the game right there. It prolonged the drive for a few extra plays, but the Giants got it done anyway. And for the linebackers, I mean, you have guys like Jalen Smith had some just embarrassing plays tonight. It's like, I just, I don't know what the Giants necessarily see in him, but I also kind of like... I get it because there's not really anybody else to play for him. So the Giants are kind of just in a crappy situation with the linebacker spot. Micah McFadden has not been very impressive either. And I do believe, I'll look at it real quick, I do believe that Tay Crowder wasn't inactive tonight, looking at the tweet made by Jordan Ronan. Yeah, he said that Tay Crowder was inactive. Rodarius Williams was inactive. You had Shane Lemieux inactive. Uh, of course, Adoree Jackson, David Sills. So it's weird that, you know, Tay Crowder and Rodarius Williams, two guys that just went to social media and talked about their playing time recently, they were not in the lineup tonight. So it is what it is. That Richie James catch, by the way, I forgot to mention it on, well, we're back to the offense now, but it was a fourth and nine play. I didn't even bring up the fourth and nine play. It was huge. So two minutes and 20 seconds to go, second quarter, Giants were up seven to three. And they decide to go for it. And I'm telling you, like last year, the last two years, actually, if Mr. Judge was our head coach still, what the Giants would have done was go out there, pretend they're going to, you know, go for it, let the clock hit zero, and the punter would have came out and the Giants would have gave the ball back. But Brian Dable, who actually goes for it and actually has some balls, he went for it, and Daniel Jones had a clean pocket. He, he stepped up. He made a throw to Richie James, and Richie James, in traffic, came down with it and converted a fourth and nine with about two minutes to go in the second quarter. And that, of course, led to the Saquon Barkley touchdown, like, you know, a few plays later. Now, the Giants definitely had trouble stopping the run in the first half. It felt like Brian Robinson, by the way, shout out to Brian Robinson, like, just the story he's had this year about getting shot and then coming back and playing super well. Um, for him, he had 12 carries, 89 yards 7.4 a carry I mean he was on fire the entire game even Antonio Gibson had five for 21 that's four points he would carry Curtis Samuel not a good running day five carries for one yard but yeah Brian Robinson was the one who was tough to stop it felt like every time he got the ball it just felt like it was a a play where the Giants might stop him like three yards like um three yards past the line of scrimmage but he would just keep 
churning his legs forward for an extra five, six, seven yards every single time. He's a very tough running back, and I think Washington found themselves a good one in round three. And even Jahan Dotson, the rookie, he had four catches, 105 yards. There was that insane throw where Heineke found him and kind of just gave him a jump ball, which is I think the Giants should do that more often. I get Dotson's like a talented guy. He's a first-round pick, but that was kind of one of those moments where it was one-on-one coverage, and I think Taylor Heineke said, screw it, I'm just going to throw it up. And it was a first and 10 deep in his own territory, and that play – was on Jason Pinnock, and it worked out. I mean, he he made an awesome catch and and put Washington in in pretty good field position there, but, you know, Dotson just went up and made a play. So he he definitely uh, probably will be a good receiver for a long time in this league, and, uh, of course, he has to stay healthy. But, yeah, he's definitely been impressive for Washington. McLaurin, of course, did his thing, 70 yards. And another game-changing play or point in this game was the two-point conversion that was called back and it kind of was a big turning point because it would have made the game 14 to 11 and it would have made it a three-point game but instead they called an illegal pick I guess you can call it so it was one of those plays where the receivers set a pick and it was pretty not like I don't know I, I feel like it was kind of iffy but he did set a pick and it was Curtis Samuel who caught a touchdown in the flat or not a touchdown he caught the two-point conversion sorry in the flat and it was good like they called it good but then there was a late flag and that took the two points off the board and that of course moved the two-point conversion back so then Ron Rivera said screw it let's just go for the extra point and they actually missed the extra point so instead of being 14 to 10 it was 14 9 or even 14 to 11 if the uh, two-point conversion stood so the Giants saved two points right there which was definitely huge and I will say the officiating was a huge part in this game and if I'm a Washington fan I'd be pretty pissed about how this one turned out but they also had opportunities themselves to win this game so you can't put it all on the refs but um, there were definitely some parts and some big parts in this game crucial moments where the refs kind of um, you know made some favorable calls for the Giants and I would say for officiating overall this weekend it was pretty rough I mean you had the uh, the Colts and Vikings game where they literally like took a defensive touchdown off the board for the Vikings when they shouldn't have Uh, if you didn't see that play you might as well go check it out it was a loose ball fumble they returned it but the refs blew it dead for god knows what reason and I felt like there was another game today where the officiating was like embarrassingly bad I can't remember which one it was but yeah I mean the, the refs have been awful this year I mean just typical stuff and I've already seen a couple people say that this game was fixed and whatever and look if you think the NFL's fixed just don't watch it like I, I don't know what to say at this point like if you, there really are people that just think the NFL's fixed I mean look if, if you really do feel that way just just go watch something else I, I don't know what to say so let's go down the list here of the notes I took during this game we saw some Ben Bredesen so Ben Bredesen checked in in the second quarter the first drive of the second quarter and he kind of rotated with Nick Gates. I'm curious what the exact snap count was, but I feel like those guys played pretty evenly. Of course, uh, Josh Izuda is on IR now, so we won't see him for the rest of the regular season, at least. Uh, I mentioned John Feliciano got blown up by Jonathan Allen. I wrote down, oh, Nick McLeod, he gave up a touchdown to Jahan Dotson. He got torched on an out-and-in type move, and uh, he got inside leverage in the end zone. He just, yeah, I mean, Nick McLeod is... Uh, You know, he's had moments this year, but overall, just not what you want starting at the cornerback position. I mentioned the the pick play, the two-point conversion. Landon Collins, I actually didn't mention this. Landon Collins had a big third down stop in the hole versus Curtis Samuel, I believe it was. But it was so cool seeing uh, Landon Collins make big plays for the Giants in, in 2022. It's been a while since we've seen that, so that was awesome. There was a Daniel Bellinger drop, maybe, on third down. It was the Giants were pretty deep in their own territory. I would say Jones threw it slightly behind him. Him. like he hit his left arm he probably should have hit his right arm and, and led him with the throw so it wasn't the best throw but just one of those where you kind of would hope your tight end would catch that but I think both Daniels were at fault for that one I mentioned the other Daniel Jones play where he checked it down instead of just throwing it to Hodgins 50-50 I think on that play he probably was looking for Richie James over the middle but Richie James actually fell so instead I think he kind of just like panicked and just tried to check it down and that almost went for a pick six but um I just wish Daniel gave his guy a chance I get Isaiah Hodgins Hodgins is not Calvin Johnson, but like shit, like, as I said, what's the worst that can happen? It's going to be a jump ball. And if they intercept it, they intercept it. Like, you know, they would have been down inside their own five yard line. So it's not the biggest deal in the world or maybe a touchback at worst. But still, I just would rather give my guy a shot than check it down and, and make the field goal longer. Uh, Graham Gano, I mentioned.
mentioned him. He was definitely money in this game, and he was two for two, had his long from 50. He actually had both field goals from 50 yards out. So Graham Gano, I mean, for the money we pay him, he should be making his field goals, but when it actually comes to fruition and you see it happening in big moments, um, that's why you pay really good kickers, and I'm happy he's here. But I think that's it. I think we covered just about every main thing here. Um, I do want to play Ron Rivera's uh, clip about being asked about that final play, but uh, before we get to that, um, we'll just talk about the wild card spots and things like that. So the Lions beat the Jets today, and um, that, of course, if the Giants lost this game, I probably would have thought that our season was over because I think with the Lions and the way they've been playing and their schedule being pretty easy now, um, they probably go at least 2-1 and one the rest of the way. And if the Giants lost today, I mean, you're at Minnesota, you're playing the Colts, you're playing the Eagles. You know, they could have won any of those games, I guess, especially if Philly rest their guys. But, like, still, I mean, you don't want to have to rely on that. So now that the Giants win this game, they put themselves in a much better spot. As I mentioned, a 90% chance to make the playoffs. Now, of course... A collapse could happen. These are not easy games. You could lose at Minnesota. Um, we saw the Colts. They went up 33-0 the other day. Of course, they lost Matt Ryan. My goodness. Um, and then, of course, Philly, who, if they play their starters, it's going to be harder, obviously. But even, even if they play their backups, I mean, Garner Minshew is a fine quarterback. So that's not an uh, easy matchup either. So you never know. But I would think the Giants at least win one of the next three games. I'm hoping for at least two, but I think the Giants will either beat the Colts or the Eagles. Even the Vikings are not, they're not like a, uh, they're not an elite team. The Vikings show vulnerability. I would still pick Minnesota over us. Don't get me wrong, but um, I think Minnesota has shown they are just vulnerable in certain areas. Their pass defense is horrendous, and we are not a good passing football team, so probably not the best matchup for us, and they, of course, have a very good passing attack, which is also not a good thing for us with Dory Jackson and Xavier McKinney out, so maybe Minnesota's not the right matchup, but they are not a amazing team they they are good but they are not an elite team so minnesota is beatable but i would say most likely try and get the two wins you need or even the one win you need versus the colts or the eagles in the final week of the season so anyway here is the clip from ron rivera terry seemed pretty adamant he had pointed his hand out to the ref what, what was the explanation what did you guys see on the, on the film it looked like terry pointed that's his hand exactly out. what i thought too thank you and i gotta ask about the curtis one as well um it, it, the fourth down. Uh, yeah, I mean, I again, in fact, don't ask me about the refereeing because I can't answer the question. So I don't know how it's going to turn out when I, uh, you know, play it back. Hopefully you guys can hear that or if it's too loud, I might have to take it off. But anyway, um, he basically said he's not going to talk about it because obviously when you talk about officials, you're going to get fined. And I'm sure these guys don't want to lose thousands of dollars. So, um, you know, I, I feel for Ron. He's definitely a guy that you root for because of the, you know, the cancer thing a couple of years ago and he's been around for a while. But like, you know, I'm a Giants fan, so I'm, I'm happy about this outcome. But at the same time, when you lose because of the refs, basically, it's... It's, it's crappy. And look, there's no guarantee Washington wins. Even if they call that pass interference, they still have to get in at the one-yard line. And the Giants defense, yeah, I feel like they could have gotten a stand at that point. Realistically, I mean, look, you should have had Taylor Heineke run in the touchdown instead of going out at the one. I mean, if he cut back in, I feel like Heineke would have scored. So if you're going to blame anybody, blame your quarterback. I feel like if you're going to rely on blaming the refs, I mean, I get it. But you also got to hold Heineke accountable because on that you know, run he had from about seven, eight yards out where he dove to the right pile on, he could have cut it back inside and probably scored. So yeah, I don't want to hear it about the officiating, but I, I do get it. So anyway, yes, it feels good. It's it's 1230 now, so I got to get to bed and edit this thing. So I'm going to go to bed. But um, as I said, at least I stayed up for a Giants victory. If I stayed up for a Giants loss tonight, it would have been even more like miserable. So I'm like, you know, at least we won. So that will do it. I will talk to you guys probably, well, tomorrow I'll do the NFL week 15 review but the next giants video might it might be the week 16 uh preview versus the uh versus the Vikings, as I mentioned. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Actually, maybe I'll do another questions type video because you guys like that format. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But anyway, I will talk to you guys next time.